Weeks ago, America's best 22 home cooks began a journey. It's time for the world's biggest cooking competition to truly begin. They faced epic challenges. I need that on that table right now. Confronted incredible pressure. I wasn't like from day one. But I'm going to stand here and be abused. Now, just 11 home cooks remain. Tonight, they battle it out for a spot in the top 10. It's perfect. This could be in any restaurant. And the right to be called Master Chef. Somebody is going home tonight. Make sure it's not you. Oh, I'm definitely making the top 10. Walking into the MasterChef kitchen today, I'm super pumped to tackle the mystery box. The top 10 is so close that I can almost taste it, and I'm going for the win. Please, head to your stations. Thank you. It is so amazing being top 11, but today I want to be in the top 10, and the only way I can do that is stay true to my style of cooking. Welcome back, everyone. There are 11 of you left in this competition. You're almost, almost in the top 10. Now, we know we throw a lot at you, always keeping you guessing. And trust me, tonight is no different. It's time for another Mystery Box Challenge. You can probably guess by the two Mystery Boxes resting in front of you that tonight's challenge is all about choice. Oh, no. Now, on the count of three, I want everyone to lift the box on their right first. One, two, three, lift. There you have a bunch of everyday ingredients that can be found right now in homes across this country. Ground beef, bacon, ham steak, tilapia, iceberg lettuce, dill pickles, and processed cheese dip. Okay. Now, it's time to lift up the mystery box on your left. One, two, Three, lift. Ooh, wow. Oh. oh, wow. Okay. These are all the things that I would buy at the grocery store, but I can't afford. So this is exciting. There you have the elevated luxury version of the ingredients in the first box. You have Kobe beef, a Berkshire pork chop, ahi tuna steak, Stilton, caviar, fresh peas, and beautiful black truffles. Wow. It's quite an array. Ooh. That's right. It is a tale of two boxes. And the good news is that you get to decide which box you want to cook with. As far as we are concerned, there isn't a right or wrong box. We'll be judging you purely on the execution of your dish. Looking at the luxury box, I mean, it kind of seems like a trap in the sense that if you mess one of these items up, that's going to sink you. When your 60 minutes starts, please put the box back over the ingredients you will not be cooking with tonight. Got it? Yes, yes chef. 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 Okay, lift your boxes. Your 60 minutes starts now. I'm shooting straight for the fancy box. I've been poor and I've been well off. I like well off a hell of a lot better than poor. I feel like less people in the kitchen are going to embrace the cheap box. It seems like more of a challenge. I'm going to take it and make something that nobody else in this kitchen is making. I guarantee it. I choose the expensive box because to have been given such amazing ingredients and then to not use them seems kind of disrespectful to how great those ingredients are. I picked the everyday ingredients. This is the wiser box to pick because if you knock it out of the park, it's really going to show something. If I can elevate these, that definitely feels like a winner to me. First time ever, ever they have the choice between two mystery yep. boxes. Do you want to show off and do something stunning with the everyday box, or do you want to come out your comfort zone with luxury high-end ingredients? Some devils in the boxes there. Kobe beef, I mean, do they really understand how to cook Kobe beef properly? That stuff dries out in seconds. Mm -hmm. In the everyday box, what do you take to take a tilapia, a fish that costs less than a dollar a pound, and elevate it into a dish? You can do like a peanut crusted tilapia with some soy, or you can do like a stroganoff. That's one of my favorite all time dishes. 
Right, Courtney, which box did you pick? The fancy box. The fancy box. Good. What's yeah. the dish? So I'm going to do a pan-seared pork chop with some fragrant rice, and we're going to do a truffle and parsnip puree. So you love luxury, right? I do. Taste everything. Have I a will. taste that Kobe. I'm Good going luck. to. Victoria, what do you got going? Everyday box? Everyday box. I think you're the right person for the everyday box. That's flattering. Thank you, Joe. So what are you going to make? I'm making a tilapia with a little pork iceberg salad with a dill pickle and bacon vinaigrette. That dish almost sounds good. I'm almost excited to give it to you. I'm a little nervous. Wow. 20 minutes remaining. Come on, guys. Elizabeth of the Luxury Box, done? what are you doing? Um, I am doing seared Berkshire pork chop, rosemary, herb biscuits, wow. and a mustard cream sauce, and a little pea salad. I'm doing it all. The everyday ingredients, you just want you interested, or...? If you have the best, yeah. why would you say no to the best? Top ten, just around the corner. Who don't you see in the top ten? Oh, I don't know. Maybe Leslie. All right, Leslie, fancy pants. Did you even consider the everyday box? No, what, are you kidding me? So what are you making? I'm just making Kobe beef, pork chop, and the ahi tuna. A trio of proteins, and I got a pea puree. Did you taste this? Yes, I'm working on it. It needs everything. And yes. Including yes. love. Okay. What's there? Parsnips with truffle. Are the truffles in there already? Uh, yeah. Now you're talking my language. Great truffles. The problem with your food is you have not seasoned anything. You guys cannot even decide what truffle flavor tastes like unless you put salt in it. I, I, I did put salt in you it. Did you did not put any pepper? salt in it. You Do can't you tell me you're making it. No. I put salt in there here. Is no salt salt in here. In there is no salt in there. I put a little in there. I'm not. It's not seasoned. Leslie, fancy pants. Did you even consider the everyday box? Come on. No, what are you kidding me? Are the truffles in there already? Uh, yeah. Now you're talking my language. Great truffles. You have not seasoned anything. You guys cannot even decide what truffle flavor tastes like unless you put salt in it. I, I, I did put salt there in there. No salt salt in there. there is no salt in here. I put a little salt in, in there. I'm not it's not seasoned. I, I put a little at a time. What happens if I put too much salt in and then it's too salty? Good luck. I'm trying. Francis, how are you feeling? I'm good. Confident, chef. Uh, luxury ingredients. Yes, now, chef. what are you doing? Um, I'm making a filet and tuna chessboard. What's the chessboard consisting of? It's going to be pieces of seared tuna. Oh, okay, right. So and they're pieces. the black squares. Yeah. And, and the white squares? I'm going to make little squares out of them of the Kobe. So it's a surf and turf? Yes, chef. It sounds chef. confusing, but then it's Francis, so good luck. Thank you, chef. For me, traditional is a little boring. I want to be the face and the voice of gastronomy. I'm hoping to show the judges that such a basic, well-known dish around the world can be made into something totally different. Just under 10 minutes remaining. Speed up. There are some exciting, creative dishes yeah. out there. Come on. Victoria's everyday box sounds really interesting. Yeah, she's got a really spiced tilapia filet. Elizabeth's, that sounds incredible. Houston, the roasted pork chop served with this really nice puree. Francis, doing a beef and tuna chest board. Yet again, he's thinking Raw. aesthetics. And now he's going to blowtorch it for us. All oh, right. Nice. Interesting. 58 minutes gone. Last two minutes. Finishing touches. We want to see some stunning dishes, guys. Start putting that chessboard together, Francis. Let's go, chef. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and stop. Hands in the air. Give yourselves a round of applause. Well done. That's a tough one. After observing and tasting throughout the challenge, the judges now take one final look to identify three standout dishes. The winner of this challenge will receive a major advantage in the next round. So the three best dishes of the night that we are dying to take a much closer look at. Uh, the first dish, they did use the high-end box to perfection. Seasoning, absolutely spot on. Please step forward. Elizabeth, wow. I chose these very high-end ingredients. It's not stuff that I necessarily cook with, but going with risky proteins, it's what you have to do to get people's attention. And I'm terrified. It's terrifying. Describe the dish, please. It's a pan-roasted Berkshire pork chop sliced over herb biscuits with parsnip rosemary oven fries and a fresh pea salad. The sear 
on the pork. It's beautiful. Explain the sauce. It is just a grain mustard cream sauce, butter, cream, mustard, and salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. um, it's sophisticated, seasoned beautifully. Biscuits are delicious. You've gone for the high-end ingredients. You've done them justice. Right now, uh, a serious contender. Uh, really pleased. Absolutely delicious. Great job. Thank you. So, I mean, taking a look at this, the cook on the pork, it's cooked through, but it's not dry and crumbly. Mm -hmm. You know, others should start looking at you for inspiration. Couldn't be better seasoned. Thank you. Everything on here serves a purpose. It's delicious, plated elegantly. This is probably the best dish that you've uh, made so far. Thank Great you. job. Thank you. You baked, you pan roasted, you oven roasted, you seasoned, you're kind of firing on all cylinders here. It's a great dish. Thank you. Went to watch, Elizabeth. Good Thank job. You. The uh, next dish that we want to examine further, this home cook took the everyday ingredients and turned them into a restaurant quality plate. Please step forward. Victoria. Oh, nice. Wow. This is legitimately me on a plate. Everyday ingredients is the kind of stuff that I've got in my refrigerator at home. I feel that I elevated it, and I'm really excited to see what the judges have to say about it. So, tell me exactly what we have. There's a ham steak with a little cheese sauce and the filet of tilapia on top. Bacon vinaigrette over the iceberg and some potato crisps. So we've got our tilapia. The bacon is underneath it here? No, that's actually that's a piece of the ham steak the ham that steak? I crisped up and put a little bit of the nacho cheese sauce. Nacho cheese sauce. Right. In a MasterChef dish. The rich saltiness that comes from the ham mm -hmm. balances with the seasoning. But the best flavor that I'm getting, actually, mm -hmm. is the pickles from the vinaigrette. Simple dish. Elevated everyday ingredients. You made it hip. Really good job. I mean, have you won a mystery box yet? I have not won a mystery box yet. Maybe this is the night. Thank you, good Chef. Job. The one thing you need to know about tilapia, it literally eats garbage. So you have to very, very aggressively season, which is exactly what you did. The tilapia is actually cooked well. Thank you. These chips are good. You went through a process. You really thought about a strategy, picked a box, and then nailed it. Thank you very much. Good job. Thanks. Okay, the third dish we want to look at, this home cook opted for the luxury box. And in this case, the risk paid off. Please step forward. Leslie. Boom, my name's called. I'm walking up, and I don't want to pat myself on the back just yet. But I just might have this here. Describe the dish, please. You got a trio of protein here. The pork chop, the uh, Kobe beef, and you have the ahi tuna. They've all been seared on a griddle. You're the only person out of everybody tonight that had the balls to say, I'm going to go for all three. Uh, right, describe the tuna. It's just marinated in a little mm. soy sauce with a touch of balsamic vinegar mm. and some salt. Slightly warm in the center. Uh, perfect. Kobe beef? Kobe beef, just salt and pepper, and then the Stilton cheese and the caviar, just to make it look rich. And the pork was just salt and pepper and uh, just seared. Uh, here's the thing, you're not a fluke, let's get that right. Brilliant dish. For me, the best dish that you've cooked so far in this competition. And I'm just so glad it's tonight, because you've picked the perfect moment. Thank you. Tell me about the pea puree. It just has some salt, pepper, some of the cheese. It's good. You can taste the freshness, the greenness of the peas. The Kobe love the idea of putting Stilton on it. It's a classic, but it's a classic because it's delicious. And where do you put the truffles where? In the parsnip puree. Oh, it's delicious. I was angry when I was at your bench because I tasted some good food that had not been seasoned at all. But this is seasoned perfectly. So, good job. Let's leave it at that. Don't answer. Great dish. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Well done. Good job. Uh, Elizabeth, Victoria, Leslie, three amazing dishes. Only one dish can win tonight. 
and that person will then go on to receive a huge advantage. I want that advantage. I'll be one step closer to writing the cookbook that I've been dreaming of for years. At this stage of the game, it literally is game changing. This isn't just some fun, get a advantage, win a mystery box, man. I want this victory badly. I want that quarter million dollars. The best dish that we thought was the most creative. This is an opportunity of a lifetime. Forget the money, forget the, the book. I want that fabulous Master Chef trophy. Congratulations. Three amazing dishes. Only one can win tonight. And that person will then go on to receive a huge advantage. Congratulations. Leslie. Wow, finally, finally, I'm a winner. Are you ready to receive your game changing advantage? Yes, I am ready to go into the pantry. Let's go. Thinking that the entire competition is now in his hands is a terrifying thought. I really wanted to win. For tonight's elimination challenge, you will have to choose between three types of a certain kind of food. Something I'm very familiar with, something that I grew up eating. Stuffed pasta. Now, the first filled pasta is like me. Refined, cultured, it's a classic. Tortellini. Tortellini, okay. The ratio of filling to the pasta has to be exactly right. Each one has its own perfect construction. This is a very, very sophisticated filled pasta. Your next choice is once again a filled pasta. Like me, this filled pasta is inventive, hearty, fun. It almost looks like candy. Caramelli. I've never heard of caramelli pasta. They look like little bonbons. It's like the wrappers twisted on the outsides. Here they are filled with mozzarella, finished with a simple, simple tomato sauce. Okay. Finally, my own personal favorite, Leslie. A bit like me. Rough around the edges. These you gotta love. Ravolacci. Beautiful. The pasta is so thin. Almost like these light, fluffy, elegant pillows. Filling needs to be absolutely perfect. One small thing out of place, then this stuff pasta can become a disaster. Leslie, you now get to choose which one of these three filled pastas everybody out there will have to cook tonight? What's it going to be? I choose. Straight upstairs, please, Leslie. Enjoy that walk. What a happy chap. As you can probably guess, Leslie does not have to cook in tonight's difficult challenge. And now has the honor this year to be the first home cook to be in the top 10 of this competition. Give a round of applause, please. Good job, Leslie. For his second advantage, Leslie got to choose from three different types of my favorite food. Stuffed pasta. We're looking for a homemade, fresh pasta, good enough to be served in any one of my restaurants. Tonight, Leslie chose Beautiful caramelle stuffed with mozzarella. I don't know what caramelle pasta is. We don't have fancy Italian restaurants, at least not where I've been. You 10 home cooks will have one hour to make us the most perfect, beautiful, fresh caramelle in a delightful tomato sauce. Trust me, the most difficult one to pull off tonight. He did it for a reason. Anybody nervous? Yes, yes, yes. yes. So you should be. Your five minutes in the pantry starts now. Let's go. Come on, Jenny Vitello. Lift those tattoos up. Tomatoes, 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 tomatoes. When I get in the pantry, I'm looking at the dish. I pick it up and see how it's folded and see how it's twisted. I mean, I just know it's supposed to look like a candy, I think. So I'm kind of nervous a little bit. I don't hardly ever cook any Italian food at home. Anybody seen Gorgonzola? Just honey. Ace, as usual. I see all the ingredients, and I'm like, bugger it. 
<laughs> Forget the traditional pasta. I need to shine in this challenge. I'm gonna dye my pasta with beets and make it like bubble gum. Go bold, you know, go big. Okay, guys, let's go. Good. Francis has got real food in his basket. <laughs> Excellent. Guys, don't unpack yet. Is everybody familiar with the pasta machine in front of you, with the hand crank? Yes, yes, yes. 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 Leslie is going to receive a another advantage. <laughs> Come on down here and stand next to me, please. I feel like it's Christmas and I'm getting more presents. Uh, Leslie, in my hands, I have a good old-fashioned rolling pin. And you, my friend, are going to give this to one of your fellow beloved competitors. <laughs> you will also take away that home cooked pasta machine. <laughs> Whoever you give that rolling pin to, you're taking them back old school. It's probably moving their foot one step out that door. This is an opportunity of a lifetime to really focus on one individual and hopefully send them home. The kitchen is yours. I want you just to touch it. Oh, really? <laughs> Leslie is walking around like a silver fox in a hen house. Uh, no. <laughs> Teasing people. You know I love you. Yeah, Leslie, that's what I'm talking about. He just looks like he has waited his entire life to have this advantage, and he's having the best time. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, hugging it out. <laughs> <laughs> And he's got that grin on his face, and like everything Leslie does and says, I'm just thinking, get it over with. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. Wow. I am feeling so happy right now. Just the look on his face was worth a million dollars. Daniel, the chef. I'm sorry, young man, but you have been singled out by Leslie. Uh, that's going to be very difficult. I mean, are you surprised that Leslie singled you out here? No, chef. Because Leslie is a petty man that bears grudges, and this is precisely the type of behavior I expect from him. Uh, wow. It's about to get real. Yeah, yeah. You have one hour to make us perfect homemade caramelli, and at least one person is going to be going home. Is everyone ready? Yes, yes chef. chef. Your hour starts now. We know that this caramelli pasta is something that they're not familiar with. Now, times that by 100. How difficult is that to have to make with a rolling pin? You either know how to do it or you don't. If you've never rolled pasta with a pin, it's going to be very difficult. Yeah. So simply, you have to sheet out a perfect layer of thin pasta. Cut out basically squares. You put in your filling, and then you roll them like a candy. Now, the most tricky thing about this contest is managing the water content of the mozzarella. Yeah. And if there's too much water in the mozzarella in the filling, it will burst the caramella. Very technical. I gave a rolling pin to Daniel because Daniel has been nothing but nasty to me from day one. My goal, hopefully, is to send him home and I don't have to look at him anymore. So I'm gonna tell you something. First thing I was ever really into was baseball. I love the babe, so I'm swinging. I'm swinging, I'm calling it. This one's going out of the park and it's going right towards that <laughs> right there. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I gave a rolling pin to Daniel because Daniel has been nothing but nasty to me from day one. First thing I was ever really into was baseball. I love the babe, so I'm swinging. I'm swinging, I'm calling it. This one's going out of the park and it's going right towards that <laughs> right there. <laughs> wow, that is intense. See, that's why it shows you just how important it is to win these advantages. I like when he gets frazzled. 15 minutes gone, just under 45 minutes to go. I'm third generation Italian, so making pasta is nothing new to me. I'm gonna steam my tomatoes. I salt my mozzarella and I'm squeezing all of the moisture out of it. I'm gonna keep it classy and traditional, just like me. 
Right, Francis, how are you doing? Good, Chef. Good, Chef. What's that? Uh, this is a beet-coloured plaster, just to give so, it a caramel-looking colour. Raw beetroot juice. Yes, Chef. But you're just doing this for the eye again, just the colour. Yeah, I think candy and I think bubble gum, etc. you know, so... Are you always this adventurous? I mean, do you ever think about playing safe and just getting through? This is playing safe. You are nuts, you know that. <laughs> Thank you, Chef. I take you that as a compliment. You are absolutely nuts. Good luck. Thank you, Chef. Big Willie, tell me what we got. I'm doing a dessert caramelini. No. Yes. I got a squash and apple filling. Okay. And then I'm gonna make a creme anglaise. Doing that with creme anglaise, like in a dessert fashion, that's just crazy town. You know, go big and go home. But I mean, you don't want to go home, though, I right? I don't want to go home. You know that we're judging you on the caramel yes. based on, like, what we showed you. But, you know, I have to try. Well, at least you can live with that, then. Yep. 40 minutes gone. 20 minutes remaining. Woo! Jeez, time flies when you're having fun in the Master Chef kitchen, huh? I am going to be doing a Marscapone Asiago vodka cream sauce. You know, I'm excited. I really am. Daniel, you know what they call this in Italian? What's it? A mattarello. Why are you? What happened? I totally expected this kind of thing from him. I mean, you can see as he's lording over me right now that he has an axe to grind. You think that Leslie knows that you struggle with time? I mean, is it... Absolutely. He knows. <laughs> what are you making? I'm doing a short rib with kimchi and watercress. I added a little wine reduction to the pasta dough. Give it a little color. I'm a little bit worried about the wine reduction, but aside from that, I think you're in pretty good shape. Right, uh, Miss Matoda, how are you feeling? Good. I have my first one in here. Wow, that looks beautiful. Huh? What's inside? I'm keeping a classic with some mozzarella balls. Oh, good. Everyone's going crazy with no. meats and beetroot pasta. Well, I put a little bit of ground pork in my sauce. Mm -hmm. It's definitely inspired. I just asked my dad to make it at home. Okay, good. I'm channeling my dad right now. You confident you get yourself into the top ten? Yes, yeah. I am. Okay, just under ten minutes to go. Awesome. Good Thank luck. you. Yeah. Interesting stuff going on out there. The highlight right now, Jamie Rotola, sticking with tradition, and they are absolutely incredible. Courtney looks good as well. Yeah. yeah. Francis tastes dreadful. What is he doing over there? Raw beetroot juice in a pasta. Why are these people taking such risks to get into the final ten? I just don't understand. 58 minutes gone, two minutes remaining. Come on, fishing touches. Let's go, guys. Make it look good. Tidy up those plates, please. Somebody is going home tonight. Make sure it's not you. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and stop. Hands in the air. <laughs> wow. Seriously, well done. Tough challenge. All right, everybody. First up, this home cook was at a big disadvantage. Had the pasta machine taken away. Please step forward, Daniel. My instant reaction when I'm looking at my completed dish is, hell yeah, I did it. Even if I had had the rolling machine, I can't honestly say that my dish would have been different. What do we have in front of us here? This is a red wine caramelli filled with short rib. It's on a tamarind habanero curry. It's topped with roasted tomatoes, peppers, and roasted nori. As far as the technique, the pasta looks like it's rolled fine. A little less appealing color-wise. Somehow you infuse the pasta with the yes, red sir. wine? Uh, yes, Chef. As I'm kneading the dough, I reduced one cup of wine. The color is certainly what I wanted to go for. It is what you wanted. That's what you wanted. Yes, Chef. Okay. You know, the flavor combination, the heat, the acidity, the salinity, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. And it's so out of line with what we showed and what we were asking. Why go so far off? This is a chance to reach the top 10. Right. And why give you something that you've had the best of in the world? Right. If I'm because going out, because, I'm going out because, guns blazing. Because that's, that's what I asked for. This is, looks more like a steamed dumpling in a Chinese restaurant. Noted. <coughs> There's the habanero. Ooh. Hot. You think that could ever be served in an Italian restaurant? Not in an Italian restaurant. I mean, the, the pasta itself is too thick, it's gummy. You would never put red wine into pasta. 
The biggest challenge here was not the lack of the pasta machine that Leslie took away. I think the biggest challenge was yourself. Look at the size of them. I got more pasta than filling. I just want to share the experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Ah. Mm. Too spicy. A contrast that doesn't work. But I'd like to congratulate you on standing out tonight, possibly outside the door. Whew. Uh, what do you think? Uh, I wish I had made the caramelly smaller. I enjoy the sauce. Yeah. And uh, stop that. Okay, it doesn't. <clears throat> Good night. Thank you, chef. I'm not a vengeful person, but my fingers are crossed and going, okay, this is my redemption here, man. Daniel's going home. Disgusting. I'd like to congratulate you on standing out tonight, possibly outside the door. Good night. Thank you, chef. Dude, what am I doing? Why am I making this crazy Japanese curry pasta? I gotta rein it in. Disgusting. Jamie. So tell me about the sauce. It's a creamy tomato sauce. There's fresh oregano, fresh thyme, ground pork, crushed tomatoes. It's like a family recipe, you know, that's It's definitely a take on my dad's. What's your dad's name? Michael. What does Michael Batolo do for a living? He works for the Department of Sanitation. 13 wow. years. It's and a tough job. He makes a killer meat sauce. These are really great. This is a perfect interpretation of taking the spirit of what we asked for, making it your own. You added the sausage to the sauce and made it a little bit richer. The mozzarella is clean, milky, dry. What do you think Michael Vitola would be saying if he was standing here and we gave him one of these caramella teas? I think he'd be really proud. Does he know how good of a cook you are? Yeah, I cook for him all the time. This is a dish that not only Michael Vitola would be happy. I would be happy to also serve it at my restaurant. Thank you very much, Jamie, because you really brought me a taste of Queens. Yay, thank you. <sighs> Next up, please, Scottish Francis. What's the dish? I made caramelly pasta with beet juice, with short rib and mozzarella. The idea of beet juice in a pasta, that's solely for the look. You wanted the color because that made you think of candy. Yes, chef. What's going on with the sauce? Um, it is a yellow cauliflower and yellow bell pepper puree. And the sauce I was just trying to create some summer and some vibrancy. That doesn't go together. So I thought it did, I was wrong. And there's no seasoning. That right there, it tastes like fatty shredded beef. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have this as a sauce on mm -hmm. top of that, and then it's encased in beetroot pasta, it's just not good. I support people that like to think out of the box and be creative, but it has to taste good, and it just doesn't. I understand, Chef. Thank you. Making top 10 is one of the most important things for any contestant on MasterChef. Should have kept it simple, overcomplicated it. Ooh. Next up, Qatar. Describe the dish. It's a short rib stuffed caramelly with a vodka white sauce and topped with roasted garlic. They look like they've got a right amount of filling. Uh, the filling's delicious. Love the heat at the end. We got excited that someone finally did a cream sauce. But you know what, Cutter? You may have a face like a British bulldog tuna wasp, but you do cook like an angel. Don't forget that. Appreciate it. Good dish. Thank, Thank you. you. Next up, Courtney. Very courageous. You just used fresh tomatoes. It's a mozzarella-filled caramello with fresh tomatoes, garlic, and some yellow onion. 
Did you do anything to season the mozzarella inside? Um, I salted it and then tried Smart. to coax that moisture out of it. And this is very dry, very firm. It's a good balance between the sauce and the pasta itself. The plate is beautifully presented in its own simple Italian way. It's a super sexy, simple dish. Thank you, sir. Last up, Big Willie. Right, describe your dish. It's a squash apple caramellini with a creme anglaise sauce. Joe said caramelli, the kind of thing that he loves eating daily, something I want to see in one of my restaurants. And so, why a dessert? It just, it just came to me. I just, I get so upset because it's, it's almost like an abuse. France is here with the tricks, Daniel's confused and you're just all over the shop, but I am so unimpressed. I see this dish and I'm, I'm absolutely dreading tasting it because it sounds disgusting. It looks like regurgitated dog vomit. Oh, it's just unappetizing. Excuse me. Why a dessert? It just came to me. It sounds disgusting. It looks like regurgitated dog vomit. Oh. It's just unappetizing. Excuse me. Custard is way too sweet. It's just obliterated with cinnamon. I love you when you cook humble, but I absolutely detest when you've been given the best of ingredients and a chance to just show some technical ability. I call it Lazy Willy, not Big Willy. Disgusting. Not feeling too good about myself because my dish sucked. That did not work. Tough challenge. Uh, some of you rose to it. Some of you deflated across it. There were two standout dishes tonight. The first one had a perfect balance between the pasta and the filling. You could taste the love that went into that. That dish was made by Courtney. Good job. Good job. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Now, tonight's winning dish, the caramelli, were definitely restaurant quality. This individual took the spirit of the night and literally made it their own. A big congratulations, Jamie Vitolo. Well done. Amazing. Congratulations to Courtney and Jamie. You're both going to be two phenomenal captains in the upcoming team challenge. Well done. Uh, brilliant. Now it's time for the bad news. The three worst dishes of the night. The first home cook that's in danger this evening, overthought and underperformed. Please step forward. Daniel. The next dreadful dish that didn't understand the brief and completely made a mess of it. Francis, step down, please. The final home cook in danger tonight went way too far out of the box, out in orbit somewhere. Big Willie. Tonight, all the three of you were so desperate to stand out, and as a result, at least one of you will be standing outside of the MasterChef kitchen tonight. Daniel and Willie, take a step forward, both of you. Uh, tonight, you both performed badly. In fact, you were galaxies away from where we were hoping this was going. And tonight, Daniel and Willie, you are both so lucky that you dodged that bullet. Both of you say goodnight to Francis, please.
and go back to your stations. Right, see you. Francis, young man, you want to be different, you want to be quirky, and it's a, a time to shine. Tonight, it just didn't work. Yes, sir. Our business is a craft. It's not an art. The pasta might have been rolled thin enough, but the puree didn't go right with it. There are certain rights and wrongs in the kitchen, and, and it comes to putting food together. Get that foundation solid, and you're going to step into a kitchen and then take off. Okay? Come and say goodbye, buddy. Aye, aye, aye. Thank you for everything, sir. Thank you, buddy. <clears throat> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good luck to you, my friend. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm very sad that I'm leaving. Being here in the MasterChef kitchen has changed my life. Francis. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you, chef. I really want to take everything I've got from here to the next level. Congratulations, blue team. <laughs> and focus on the career I've always wanted to have, and that's working with food. It's delicious. Yes! <laughs> Long live Scotland. Great job. Thank you, Chef. I wish I could have made it to top ten, but I will be that lonely 11th person flying off into the distance. Next time... <laughs> The home cooks face hundreds of football fans. The Master Chef flag football game is about to start. Push, 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 dig, dig, dig. Who will snap under the pressure? Y'all burning stuff. I need you on the grill. And which team will battle the elements? 15 seconds to go. Come on, come on, beat the rain. Let's go. And claim victory. Whoa! Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the closest result ever. On the potato, two potato.